it's not just enough now to say to younger people, hey, look, there's a black first, <laughs> mm -hmm. everyone smile and happy. It's like, no, no, let's look at their, their history. Let's just talk big picture. Mm -hmm. What does black representation mean to you? Starting with you, Kenneth. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a cliche for me. Um, I think when you start talking about our, our journey in America, which is unique, um, we're, we're not the only people that have been oppressed in America, but we the, we are, in my opinion, um, uniquely um, oppressed and alienated socially, politi politically, and economically. Um, it's we've, from a societal standpoint, America has marketed individual success as communal success or systemic change. Uh, in, in this paradigm, it's a system that we all live in, and and someone's personal um, affluence and success has no relationship to the social, political, and economic alienation that black people have dealt with for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And I think when you get in a digital age where it's really easy to disseminate um, messaging um, and you have these, you know, listen, black people since reconstruction have been holding office. Um, you know, that, that's not anything new from a historical standpoint. So now when you have recent have black joint chiefs of staff, uh, presidents, vice presidents, people seem to take that as progress. Um, I think if that's the case, we need to start redefining what progress is because I honestly don't think there is a common black nationalistic ideology that exists nationwide or locally because you know we don't like to have those discussions but there's a thing that was called cointel pro and it was government initiatives to suppress black leadership at the highest levels and we are looking at the results of america winning that war mm. in my opinion yeah what about you kizzy absolutely no i 110 percent agree i think it's not just about having black faces in a space right you actually have to be connected to the community and doing things that actually uplift that community. So, I mean, we can have people who are at the highest levels. Um, think about, you know, Supreme Court Clarence Thomas, right? Like mm -hmm. he's there, but what is he doing? Further to Kenneth's point, it's kind of like he's kind of uplifted that kind of individual sense of like, yes, you know, people are able to rise on their own merits, but he's not looking at it in the, like a no, holistic way. Of like, how is this affecting black people yeah. as a whole? And so it really isn't about just having you know, a black person. It's really about having someone who's connected and is going to do something to advance, you know, black issues. So that begs the question, what is a good black representative, right? Mm. Because mm -hmm. if you ask someone like a Candace Owen, she's like, I'm representing for black people too. I'm just conservative. So are we biased in some way towards certain political leanings when we say someone is a good representative? What is actually good? Unfortunately, black pain, black, um, alienation has been commodified in America. So meaning that someone like a Candace Owen can actually get on a soapbox and say, oh no, I'm, I'm, I, give me some of this blackness. I'll tell you what black people should do. Yeah, I'm off the plantation. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, free. Yeah, I'm free. I'm a free thinker. Um, Kanye, I'm a free thinker. Right. Someone who's famous. Mm -hmm. Fame does not equate to um, intelligence. Fame does not equate to commitment. Fame does not equate to wisdom. So for me personally, I think there that's a distraction. For me, um, the leadership, for example, you just mentioned the Supreme Court. To show you how symbolic we become and how everything becomes cultural entertainment, the most recent um, Supreme Court nominee, we're going to have a black woman as a, as a Supreme Court justice. Let's talk about it, because um, a lot of people celebrated listen, it, but, they celebrated, yeah. celebrated but what? That, and they don't understand, first of all, what the construction of the Supreme Court has been doing what, what it is in its origins, which is to protect um, white male ownership and power mm -hmm. and the rule of law. If you study the Supreme Court, um, the Supreme Court hasn't been liberal since for the last 55 to 60 years. If you really study it, when it had to choose between government and consumers, it well, corporations and consumers, it chose um the, the corporations, when it, chose, when it has to choose between the defense, defendant, the individual, and the government, it chooses the government. There's a lack of critical thinking in American society. It's a lack of critical thinking in our community. And we are 
caught up in the symbolism as opposed to tearing down the paradigms. You know, you can throw 30 Supreme Court justices in there. It's not going to change. Obama appointed federal judges all across the land. It didn't shift what was going on in, in federal court at all. So it's like, if you want to change this system that is a dogged system, you have to really stop looking at these items as progress. You have to, what Malcolm said, mature. We haven't matured politically. So, you know, anyone can come along and we're like, hey, oh. So what do you think, what do you mean by mature? Because, um, you know, I've challenged you a little mm-hmm. bit because I do think that Ketanji Brown Jackson being confirmed to the Supreme Court is a big deal. Well, I, I want to, no, but a as deal. a black woman, I, I, I you have you. to yeah. speak first no. as a black woman, though. What did it mean to you? Did it mean something to you? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's so important that our Supreme Court represents the people of America. It's like we've never had a black woman on the Supreme Court before. And just, you know, I know we were talking a little bit earlier about that that iconic picture, you know, with her daughter looking at her so at was so with so much admiration. You laugh, but it's true. <laughs> no, no, I don't it's, I'm not laughing at But that. it's true. I'm it's not, like, I'm you know, it just it just gives children, young people a sense of what is possible and to think higher and better. Um, so I think that's important. Um, to your point, I know it doesn't actually change the system. No. And it doesn't really change the ideological balance of the court either. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, and, and, and that's, that's my a big concern because it, it, it's really dangerous then because when we put so much stock into that, but it doesn't change the paradigm, mm. it's almost as the the effect of it is is to support whiteness. And white supremacy. So you're talking about just upending the system. Entirely. Is representation like building about, your own I'm table? About a upending mm. it, upending it in the sense that we have to build political and social systems that are practical to our conditions. That mm. and that is antithesis to those people getting in in Congress or on the Supreme Court or on the top Fortune 500 company. If if for instance. In our communities, if we imagine if there was a mass cultural shift where people began to educate their own children. And when I say own, I mean community wise. In other words, after these kids came home, they had a compulsory um, education that's happening in their neighborhood. And I'm talking about the Brownsvilles, the Comptons, Mm -hmm. the places where we're on the bottom and we begin establishing our own curriculum. So we had an idea or ideology of how we interacted in American society. We don't have that. Everyone else has that. Um, And I'm not to say that that would be the end all of of our issues, but the problem has been we don't have an independent ideology in a system that has been very predatory. It's a predatory system. Yeah. The fact that we are still celebrating first black is insane. Right. It's not just enough now to say to younger people, hey, look, there's a black first. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everyone smile and happy. It's like, no, no, let's look at their their history. Let's see what they've done in the past. And I think Kamala Harris kind of, you know, had that criticism thrown at her. Like, you have a history as a prosecutor. Have you really had our backs mm-hmm. as a black person? So, you know, you're definitely seeing that. Even with Eric Adams, you're seeing that same kind of thing where he's definitely not a progressive darling. Far from that. Yes, he's Mm -hmm. the second black mayor of New York City. (laughs) Oh, we're going to talk about (laughs) that. He's ready. That's on Um, question card number three. Go ahead. (laughs) um, Yeah, you know, um, he he is a cop. He and people do not see that he's necessarily putting forth policies that they feel is going to move the needle on things like gun violence. It's like, okay, so you're going to return to some sort of stop and frisk. Stop and frisk was deemed unconstitutional. Yep. How is that helping Certainly us? Certainly was. So you know, you know, there's there's definitely, I think, a, a greater awareness yeah. in oh, younger people yeah. that it, it's more than just having that black face in the space. It's about what are you bringing? What are you doing? Are you actually helping us? As I think Kizzy is absolutely right. Mm-hmm. I think representation right. matters. My only concern is that how do you quantify the symbol symbolism of of the of the rep- representation? Like how do you quantify it? And, and as to movement and success and change, I get it. Um, that's my only concern because in certain regards, when I read about Fred Hampton and H. Rat Brown and Malcolm, that's what inspired me to become an attorney. And it wasn't because I saw an attorney, it was because they said Malcolm couldn't be one. Because we don't know that nationalistic and that militant intellectual fighting side of, which is rich history, we have a rich history of abolition in this country and fighting. Um, that's just as inspirational. But it's almost like 
this society is telling us, ah, forget about that. CRT, what is, uh, you take a really substantive concept and you make it into a brand. And that's what's dangerous about American and anti-intellectual side. Of it. Well, I would agree with that. I think that, you know, there is this kind of thing where, you know, America is mainstream white. America mm -hmm. tends to minimize that kind of, you know, militant mm -hmm. side. Even, you know, Martin Luther King had a militant side Hell towards yeah, the end of his life. And mm -hmm. we never talk about never that. It's kumbaya nope. and we're all together. Rosa Parks so I do think, was. Absolutely. I do think there's a point to be made with that.